Greetings on this holy night. Welcome to those who are gathered in the sanctuary as well as those who are worshiping virtually with us this Christmas Eve. You may encounter the presence of God as we worship. Prepare yourselves now in spirit. I want to thank those whose efforts make this evening's Christmas Eve service an experience of worship. Those who decorated the sanctuary, those who brought light to our Advent wreath through the Advent season, those who contributed the beautiful poinsettias for the Christmas Eve chancel, those who have prepared music, bringing us again the songs of the angels, and those who gather tonight. Your presence in person and virtually is certainly appreciated. Tonight's Christmas Eve service will include the lighting of the Christ candle. If you are worshiping virtually, I invite you to light a candle of your own wherever you may be worshiping, celebrating the light of Christ that shines upon you wherever you may be. Holy Communion will also be part of our Christmas Eve service. In the United Church of Christ, we practice an open communion table. That means, regardless of your denominational affiliation or congregational membership, or lack thereof, the communion table is open to you. Those gathered in the sanctuary should have received individually packaged communion elements as you entered. If you did not, you are, and would like to participate in communion, I invite you to get your communion elements from the table by the sanctuary doors now. Hang on to those until we I'll get to the communion liturgy in the service, and the communion blessing has been offered. Then we will receive communion together as a congregation. If you're worshiping virtually, I invite you to gather something to serve as elements of communion and participate in receiving communion during the service. Receiving communion in your home in no way desecrates the sacrament, but rather sanctifies your home altar as you rest in the abiding shelter of our God. Communion will conclude with the candlelight singing of Silent Night. Margie, Matthew, and John will provide instrumental music while your candles are being lit as you remain in your pews. After all candles are glowing, we will begin to sing as printed in the bulletin. Again, if you are worshiping virtually, you're encouraged to light a candle at home and join in the singing of Silent Night. Come. Let us celebrate the good news of great joy, which is for all people. Christ the Lord is born this holy night.
Please stand for the lighting of the Christ candle. In the beauty of this hour, we celebrate the birth of the Christ child. In the mystery of this hour, we celebrate God's grace that has come to us. In the quietness of this hour, the frenzy of the world does not and should not touch us here. In the holiness of this night, we proclaim our hope. On this night, the angels sing. On this night, heaven and nature sing. On this night, our hearts also sing. Tonight, on the night of all nights, we light the candle at the center of our Advent wreath and at the center of our faith. We light it in the name of the one who is the light of the world. And as Mary did so long ago, we name this light Jesus. Source of all illumination, we celebrate tonight the coming of your light to dwell among us. Bless these holy flames, that their glow may be blessed by the beauty of your abiding presence. May the light of this candle give us hope in times of darkness. Bless us, that we may reflect the light of Christ in our daily lives. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen.
scripture reading this evening comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. Now it came about in those, days, in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all were proceeding to register for the census, everyone to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, in order to register, along with Mary, who, who was engaged to him and was with child. And it came about while they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And in the same region there were some shepherds staying out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terribly frightened. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy, which shall be for all the people. For today... In the city of David there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom God is pleased. And it came about, when the angels had gone away, into heaven that the shepherds began saying to one another, Let us go straight to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came in haste and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. And when they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about the child. And all who heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as had been told them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Charles Dickens wrote, For it is good to be children sometimes, and never better than at Christmas, when its mighty founder was a child himself. That is a quote that we frequently turn our attention toward during Advent. It is most often associated with calling the child within ourselves toward the joy of the season. Tonight, what if we were to identify not only with the joy, but also allow the child in us to be drawn by the mystery of this holy night? I mean, how would a child respond to mystery? When have you ever seen a child step back from mystery? When something stretches their understanding, when something is bigger than they can understand, they gather around it in awe and wonder. Children are always ready with questions when they encounter mystery. On this holy night, let's be children drawn toward the mystery. What questions would you have? There are probably more questions than answers when it comes to the birth of the babe of Bethlehem's manger. But here's a good one. Why a baby? I mean, with all heaven and earth at God's disposal, why did God's plan of the ages begin with a baby? Why not start with a divine decree? Was the God who spoke all creation into existence suddenly at a loss for words? John's Gospel calls Jesus the Word, saying that in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. With that prequel in mind, the question gets even more perplexing, doesn't it? Why a baby? Why not start with someone who had already risen to a seat of power with, and authority? Someone who had established a record of stability, character, and justice? There just seems to be a lot that could go wrong between the birth of a baby and the baby becoming who he was meant to be. Why a baby? Wise men of our day, men of faith, have their theories. Pointing to miraculous birth narratives of Moses and Samuel, they tell us the story of the babe of Bethlehem follows a pattern of foreshadowing that points to a child marked for divine purpose. Maybe they're right. After all, they are wise men. But then again, maybe they're overthinking it. The birth of a baby is an event that gives everybody notice. Everybody gathers around. This baby was certainly no exception. Everybody from angels to shepherds, from magi to barnyard animals, gathered around the baby in the manger. People through the ages have continued to gather around the baby, as did the children as we began our service. Maybe it's just that simple. Everybody gathers when a baby is born. Why is that? What is it about a baby that pulls people in? Is it because a baby shows us our deepest selves? We are all unique and live different lives. Shucks, we aren't even in the same place tonight as we worship. But one thing is true of all of us. We were all once babies. How could we have forgotten? For some of us, it's been a long time, and we simply can't remember. Some of us spend so much time hiding our, our vulnerabilities from others that it has become easy to deny that we still have our moments and feelings of vulnerability. Sometimes we're drawn in simply by seeing how much a baby is loved by everybody, even before they have done a single thing to be worthy of that love. That's something we might have forgotten somewhere along the way, too. Either how we were once loved like that or how to love somebody else like that. Babies remind us of what it feels like to love and to be loved. What better way is there to be drawn toward God's great love than by a baby in a manger? 
Thomas More seems to agree with Charles Dickens when he says, Christmas is a time to focus on the child, your childhood, perhaps your children, the world's children, your child's spirit, fragile beginnings, innocent rejection of the world's adult ways. On this holy night, let us become children again. It is a time to let ourselves be drawn toward the mystery of the night. It is a time to gather in awe and wonder, not to answer all the questions, but to simply let our wandering minds ask them. Let us hear the call of the deep mystery of this night, the mystery of the baby in the manger. Let us begin to see just an inkling of the potential of what we still might grow to become ourselves, of all that the world might still have the potential to become, if we simply stopped to behold the mystery of the baby in the manger. Be reminded by the baby what it's like to be loved in all of our vulnerabilities by the steadfast love of our God, to find in the baby God's promise of peace and goodwill to humankind, to hear the song of the angels as they sing again tonight. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to every baby ever born. Amen. be seated. In this season of buying and selling, accumulating and overindulgence, let us be mindful of the joy that is found in sharing. For through our sharing, we extend the ministry and message that proclaims the good news of great joy, which is for all people.
I invite those who may comfortably do so to stand for the prayer of dedication. God of glory, in Jesus Christ, being born among us, your light shines and cannot be extinguished. May the light of Christ glow brightly within our lives. Through this offering, may all your children know joy and peace as this congregation gives witness to Christ's light. Amen. You may be seated. Let the child in you be drawn to this manger and to this table. Come, not because you are powerful, but because you are vulnerable. Come, not because you are holy, but because you are human. Come, not because you understand, but because you are seeking. Come, not because of your accomplishments, but because of your potential. Let the child in you be drawn to the child in the manger and to this table. Not because he was born in the light of Bethlehem star so long ago, but because he waits to be born in you tonight in the light of the candle's glow. Please read responsibly with the prayer of praise. Let us join in the chorus of the angels as we offer God our praise. Glory, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Let us join together in unison in the prayer of confession. O oh God, we confess that we sometimes close our eyes to the light offered in Christ. We admit we often fail to share the gift of grace we have received from you. We ask that you forgive us and fill our spirits with your light. May we be more faithfully bear your peace to our world. Amen. Fear not. This day is a good news, a day of good news of great joy. A Savior is born in our midst. Praise God as you treasure in your heart all the things that you are seeing and hearing as the light of God's love is made to dwell among us. The night our Lord was betrayed after the Passover feast, he took bread, he broke it, he gave it to his friends, and he said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In a similar way, after the supper, Christ took the cup, he gave thanks and blessed it. He said, This is my blood which is shed for many. As often as you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. Come, Holy Spirit, bless this bread and bless this cup. May they awaken us to the child in the manger and to your great love for the child in each of us and to the vulnerabilities of all your children. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for us, that we might become the body of Christ. Do this in remembrance of him. The cup of the new covenant, written upon our hearts by the Spirit of God. Do this in remembrance of Christ.
Friends, before we pray, take a good look around at one another, around the sanctuary. See what mystery is revealed among us in the light of Christ. Welcome, holy child. You made not only your home among us, you have come to dwell within us, making our lives your manger and your cathedral. Your presence brings us peace and joy. You open the way for us to love, to go beyond our selfish inclinations, to seek the good in each person, to eliminate the barriers that divide, to be a welcoming home worthy of your presence. Amen. And now, as you go forth from this place and this moment of worship, let the peaceful glow of the sanctuary light light your way back home whenever you may stray from God's path. May you follow the way of God's light, abandoning yourself to the mystery of God's great and steadfast love that has come in the Christ child.